Mongoose Jake here with my video going over the current Busby situation and I want to give my thoughts on it. I see everybody else seems to be doing so, but well, with me being the one who's actually at the center of this, I felt it's kind of prudent for me to give my perspective and my thoughts on Busby in general and including going forward. So if you haven't been kept up to speed, Busby introduced a number of new blasters, and I was the very first reviewer given access to them because of the fact that, like you see behind me, Busby is my favorite company. has been since 2004 when I picked up my very first uh, Busby blaster in a double shot. I actually still own that one. And no, it hasn't broken. But I, I still have had a fondness for the company because they do things kind of different. They're, they have a mixture of good performance on some of their blasters and then sometimes they just make funky designs that are unique and you know they like to like to a lot of times use wild color schemes and it gives them a whole unique personality and I like that they're not just a copycat and yeah they they have their their flubs of products once in a while and then they have some good ones just like every other company well fortunately this time they've made their biggest mistake this blaster here, the Adventure Force Thundershot, and that's what everybody has went, and I'm going to say, everybody's went a little overboard on this. There is a definite mistake made by Busby. They sent me this one here. This is actually the cause of the whole, whole thing. This blaster here is actually pretty good. I gave it a positive review with a note to the odd ergonomics. Like, I still, I want to show everybody, I said you can one hand prime it. Absolutely can. It does require you to kind of spin it around sideways and do it that way. That's odd. The grip for such a huge pistol, again, the grip is weird. It can be easily rectified with a uh, 3D printed version, which somebody's going to be helping me out with that. I actually have somebody who's designed it. I will feature that in a separate video because I want to keep this as short as possible, even though it's going to already go long. But this blaster performs well. I got over 70 feet per second, consistently. You can see my original review. And then everybody else went and bought theirs off the shelves and found out, wait, this thing's not that great. You know, everybody's performed way down like in the 50s, maybe, maybe 60 at best. But everybody was getting bad performing ones that broke evenly and they broke fast too. Somebody who I respect their reviews of with Buff Daddy Nerf, who runs the Blaster Hub blog, he had two of them break within a very short order. Now, he's as unbiased as possibly can be. And there is some heavy bias going on around with other reviewers here and there, because some just don't care for Busby. And I'm not going to name names, but that's just natural human nature. We have our favorites. Even me. I try to remain as unbiased as I possibly can. Even though I, I obviously like Busby, I will still make... A video as honest as possible. That's why when I've seen the problems coming up with people who I genuinely respected their opinion and know that they're as unbiased as possibly can be, and I will say that about Buff Daddy Nerf. His written reviews on the Blaster Hub blog, they're free of bias, 100%. He likes things for what they are, and he'll also tell you the truth when something is terrible. It doesn't matter who it's made by, whether it's Nerf, Dart Zone, Busby, or X-Shot, or complete total off-brand. He does those too. And I like that. And I absolutely will stick to referencing him a lot in some of my videos in the past and going forward. Because I can respect that. That's what I also shoot for. That's why I made a revisiting the Thundershot video, which hasn't gotten as many views, but it was I think that's one of the most important videos for everybody to see. I took this one, the good performing blaster, opened it up. I fired it over the chronograph. Live. And with minimal editing, that video was shot, and I didn't edit anything out that pertained to the firing or the opening of the blasters. I opened this one and two that I bought with my own money, and as you could see, if you watched that video, Busby had made a huge change. And it was apparent why the performance difference was there because the uh, catch mechanism wasn't securely keeping the plunger tube forward, and it was allowing it to back off of the seal to the cylinder, and error of course was getting lost, huge efficiency issue, and the catch system was far inferior and broke. So all of a sudden you had me out saying this is good, 
other people buying it, finding out it was bad, when we're talking about two separate blasters hidden within the same shell. Now, that's an issue. I approached Busby with this issue, and I haven't heard back from them. And up to this point, they've been very, very good about handling criticism. They've been very good about listening. This marks the first time that they haven't been. Now, I have talked to them about not only this blaster, but the long-distance darts that I got were horrible. Some had glue literally, literally just piled over like, in, like a lava flow. And then some didn't have any glue at all. Some had tips that weren't pushed in. Some had tips that had extra pieces down in the foam. So that means they wouldn't actually seat back properly. And then some were fine. Horrible quality control issues on the long distance darts that I got in the blasters they sent me. And as well as the, the four or five that I bought recently. So I did approach them about that. And I was actually given, I gave them video and photographic evidence to show what the issues were. And they actually, I sent it to them with a Google document so that they could share it at their headquarters. And they actually used it with a meeting they had with their factory that happened a couple Thursday, Thursday nights ago. And it, the meeting actually went long, it went from like 8 p.m. to midnight. But I was actually on the outside of that, but they, uh, they were working on it. But I haven't heard back from them since, and that's a little concerning. But a little concern is gone now. These proper blasters that I gave the recommendation to are starting to show up on shelves. Even White, who is one of my patrons, he actually found one at his local Walmart. Found it, took it apart. It has the proper catch, it has the better internals. And his is shooting a little softer than, than this one is, but it's still a good, it's a good pistol. Now, for those of you who are going to go look and see, does your Walmart have the bad internals or the good internals? Simply do this. In the package, which this is exposed in the package, pull the hammer back. If the trigger moves, it's a bad internal. It's got the, the bad catch system. If it doesn't move, this is what you've got with the full sliding catch mechanism instead of the little uh, leverage sear style. Now this, trigger, zero movement. And you can also kind of peer into there and see if you can see the catch. I don't count on that because if you're in the package trying to stare, that's not, not really great. But if you can get this to prime back, no movement on the good trigger. Now let's move on. What is the full point of the video? I'm wanting to address Busby as a company right now. I see a huge gathering of people who are just saying Busby's trash, Busby's garbage. They haven't made good blasters in a long time. And all that tells me is that they haven't paid attention. Busby's been making good blasters. They've made a monumental issue and mistake here with a Thundershot. And they've got to fix that. And how they handle my communication with them also is going to affect me and my relationship to them going forward and me doing that revisiting the Thundershot video may have cost me my uh, partnership with them and that's if that's the case that's fine I would lose a little respect for them for not being willing to take criticism but they haven't shown that in the past I think now all of a sudden they were in a fran uh, frantic uh, frenzy because something happened here and from my perspective, this is just my uh, speculation, I think the change happened in the factory. I don't think that this occurred at the headquarters of Busby. I think this happened at the factory, and I think that they're scrambling right now trying to get the better version out, because now a couple people are finding those. So I would just say on the Thundershot, let's just step back and breathe for a second. Let's see if Busby can actually fix their problem because if we if we held every company accountable for making a mistake one mistake and if you wanted to times it by two because they actually went and deleted comments that were critical of the Thundershot on Facebook under my review they posted my review of it my original review and then they even deleted my own comment about it and that's a bad sign and I am going to be holding that, uh, holding them accountable for that. But I'm also at the same time saying, let's step back and take a moment here before we go and completely, you know, 
to completely dismantle the company for a mistake. Because every other company would also have to be dismantled publicly for making mistakes. Because how many times has Nerf made a bad blaster with horrible internals and they're still making still making products people are still trying to build up hype for the next product yeah there's this whole hate on nerf thing going as well but people still going and buying the new blaster and you see everybody going after it nobody's ostracized nerf for that i mean the warden showed up and broke everywhere i don't even hear about that anymore so take everything with a little bit of forgiveness and I mean X-Shot and Dart Zone haven't had any humongous slip-ups but they've also made their own bad products here and there just not as many they've been more consistent and so I'll give Dart Zone and X-Shot the kudos on that but getting on to the whole sentiment that I'm seeing I mean I just watched a couple of videos from other people who are content creators on YouTube and their comment section not them themselves, but their comment section is full of a whole bunch of people saying Busby's not made a, a good blaster in a long time. That's completely and totally untrue. I'm going to hold up the one right now. It's still being made, still on the shelves. Busby Revolution. This thing is fantastic. It's $10 on Dollar General shelves. You can find it for less if you go to... Uh, it's, it's online, and it was either... Uh, Murdoch's or a couple other places that had it for eight dollars and eighty-eight cents. This thing is—I have—I've had no fewer than twenty of these, and I've modded them. I've sent them out as gifts. I—I I absolutely adore this thing. It has good ergonomics. It's a nice, smooth top prime, mag-fed, can be converted to short darts, and you're looking at ten dollars. And after having about twenty of them, they all fire above eighty feet per second stock. And because of the internals being basically a modernized version of the Champion and Reaper internals, this thing can handle huge spring loads, takes to a brass breech really nicely, and both my easy breech style or a sealed style, you can only do a short barrel here without doing some kind of weird uh, extension to the body to cover the barrel, but you know, you can put it up and put a six inch sealed barrel, but this is, this is a good blaster. And I won't let anybody tell me otherwise. This is a good blaster. Busby currently makes this. So if you say Busby hasn't made a good blaster in a long time, you've forgotten this one. You've also forgotten a few others. And, I mean, I can make some honorable mentions. I, I love, and I've seen Walcom's video that Busby was good before Adventure Force. We're going to touch on that here real quick. Busby has made a lot of good Adventure Force blasters. Some that aren't necessarily hobby centric because they're not high performance. But the Alpha Rogue is a fantastic single shot bolt action blaster that was available for 10 bucks. It came with a scope. This one doesn't have it on it, but it came with a scope. And this one is absolutely adored by people who aren't huge blaster enthusiasts like me or probably you watching this video. But I had 10 of these things in a bin. For people to grab when we had little neighborhood wars here. These things were picked up by everybody. This was one of the first ones people used. Because they can grab just a, a pouch of darts, throw it in, close it, and fire it. And they're solid, they're good, good for what they are. A cheap blaster for people to have fun with. Same thing with things like the Clash Combat, which is a reshell of the Wizard, or the Dual Force which is a reshell of the gem. These things are key to our hobby. So for somebody to discount it and say Busby's not made a good blaster in years or they haven't made a good blaster since partnering up with the Adventure Force, they haven't made the blasters that maybe you as a serious dart blaster enthusiast will take note of, but they've made good blasters. These are more important to our hobby than the next super blaster that's 3d printed and four hundred dollars and you need to stop and take a take a thought of that things like this encourage the next group of blaster enthusiasts they may not remain in their collection they may disappear but stuff like this and then the new equalizer 
things like this. And this is a good good little pistol as well. I, will, I again, I will stand by this 100%. This is one of the more important releases Busby has made this year. This thing's good. It basically takes the internals of the gem and puts it into a four-shot capacity to match what the Clash Combat or the Wizard was, but it has the smaller plunger tube of the gem, but it has very comfortable ergonomics. And you get two of them for 10 bucks. That means a family of four can buy two packages of these, plus go grab some darts there at Walmart, like the Adventure Force Waffles, and for about 20, 30 bucks, you can have yourself a lot of fun as a family. These are important to continuing the growth of the Dart Blaster hobby. And another one that you'll see there on the shelves, the Battle Laser. This kind of combines the funkiness that I like in Busby, along with a little bit of functionality. I've modded a couple of these, and I love these. And yeah, the plastic is not up to the standards of the Revolution. This is a higher grade of plastic than this is. And I don't know why they do that. I never will. I, they could do the thicker grade because the Revolution has thicker plastic than this does. But this is still a solid pistol for 10 bucks with a 12-shot belt. And oh yeah, Busby does sell the belts for $4. You just have to contact the customer service department and they'll email you over a form to fill out and mail in. But this little thing here with simple mods, I mean, like, do it in an hour. You can have this thing firing up to around 100 or a little over 100 feet per second and with very minimal time or expense. That's a good blaster. Simple to mod, easy to work with, and this could get somebody involved in tinkering. And that's what we need. We need more of these. Cheap blaster that somebody is low risk, high reward. Keep in mind. And that was just put out last year. And that brings me to a couple others. The Rebel Mech. Completely forgotten about already. Because the Spectrum, the Dart Zone Spectrum, is the better blaster. Yes. Doesn't mean this is a bad one. Just means the Dart Zone Spectrum is probably the best flywheeler out in the market right now. You know, comparing everything, stock performance, modability, and value from the store. I mean, that's why I have, I think I have six of them now. But doesn't mean this is bad. And this came with a, a 30 round drum, which is actually very nice. It feeds very positively. And it's actually, that's my wife's favorite blaster. So keep in mind, different blasters for different people. And also a new release, the trigger fire. This thing is fantastic. It's only competition really is the, the Nerf nail biter. And that, that trigger fire is superior to the nail biter in every which way. And it's only $20 with 30 dark capacity, shooting at just right around or a little under Nerf Elite performance. Whereas the nail biter fires in about the 40s or 50s. So, you got to remember, don't get caught up in the current hype. Whether it's good hype or bad hype. You know, in this case, Busby is under fire for a mistake. A genuine mistake. They did make a mistake with this. Whatever happened on the production end, I don't know. But this is an issue. But it's not one where we should just say, you made a mistake, your company needs to burn. That's kind of how everybody's acting. And they're also taking the chance to just pile on and say, oh, Busby's trash, Busby's garbage. No, they're not. And I'm going to stand by that, even though I'm the one in the center with the most to lose. Because, I mean, look behind me. It's been my favorite company since 2004. That's not why I'm standing here saying, you know, hey, take a step back. I am more trying to open everybody's eyes to, at least the ones that are going to watch my video, everybody else is piling on. I, I'm going to say, even though I literally have the first and foremost first-hand account of this, I'm saying, let's hold up. If you want to destroy every company for the first mistake they made, we have no companies left in regards to anything. And if you want to hold the company accountable for their one mistake, and yes, I'm going to say this is a big mistake. You can't send me a product. Have me put my name on the line. Of saying this is good, and then send out an inferior product, and then use my good review in order to try to boost sales of the inferior product. I don't stand for that. That's why I made my revisiting the Thundershot and addressing issues video. And then, and then to actually go into the social media where you're posting up my review and you deleted my comment 
that does not look good. And I will clarify that. Busby headquarters does not run the Facebook page. So there is some serious issues there that they need to solve. They should never have deleted anybody's comments. They needed to stand there and be accountable and needed to be willing to be accountable. Or don't put up my review. And yeah, I mean, I benefit from the review being posted in the first hand. A few people are going to click that link and go watch my video. But I'm still a smaller channel here with just over 3,000 subscribers. It's going to help me a little bit on the front end, the front end of everything. However, as soon as somebody goes out and buys the bad version of the Thundershot, not knowing the difference, they're going to say, oh, Mungus Jake, you lied to me. Uh, and by the way, I've already heard lots of that. I've had some very nasty comments sent my way in, in private conversation. And that's coming from people who don't have the willingness to watch the other video I made showing why is there a difference in what you got from what I got and then what I went and bought. So I went and spent my own money to buy two off the shelf at my local Walmart, found out they're totally different, and that's where this really took hold. To bring this to a close, I've noticed that there is a lot of people going onto social media or making videos who were using this as an opportunity to pile on Busby for a mistake, a genuine mistake that they should have held accountable. And people should remember this because, I mean, you do not want to go out and buy this blaster and get the bad version. What you do want to do is take a moment to think what other companies have made a bad product or have made a publicity mistake, which in the case of deleting comments and censoring the comments on Facebook and then they block comments on other social media platforms, that shouldn't have happened in the first place. And I'm going to be the first one to say that. But take a step back and don't be the person who says, Busby's never made a, a good blaster since the Sentinel. Yeah, I've seen that. Or it's been years. Or Busby hasn't made a good blaster since they partnered with Adventure Force. Like, Welcome's title. They've made a lot of good blasters since then. They still make good blasters. Go, go buy a Revolution for 10 bucks at your local Dollar General or order one up online for cheaper than $10 and tell me I'm wrong. Because you won't be able to. Unless you're just literally going to you know, falsify your information. This blaster is good. The Revolution is very, very good. It's the best $10 blaster on the market. And it may be the best blaster for under $20. I, I, I'm actually putting that that to it. There's going to be a video that I make coming up on my best blasters list and this this one here is the best blaster under $20. You're not going to find a better one. You know for for the average user this is your best blaster for under $20. And I will stand by that. Absolutely. Now that said that's why I am saying take a step back hold them accountable for, for this mistake but don't don't be ready to just destroy the company over one mistake of a bad product and then their their bad tactic of trying to censor the comments surrounding it on social media. Because again, it should be free and open to where we can say what we want to say on their page in a respectful manner, which all the comments I've seen were respectful. They got deleted, including my own. And yes, I am putting this at the back end of the video to show I am not just turning away and giving, a, giving them a pass on this. I'm not. I've already put my, myself straight in the crosshairs in this. I will probably, there's a good chance I'll lose my partnership with Busby, which is fine. To clarify things, people think I have been called a Busby sellout, a I'm bought off. I just say what they want to say. They've never once, never once. Has any of my reviews ever been influenced by Busby? They've never told me what to say. I know that uh, a couple of YouTubers have said that they, they were told that. I've never once been told what to say or to only say good things or positive about Busby. Not once. And they don't even send me that many blasters. This group of Adventure Force blasters that just came out, that was, that was my you know, first ones for the year. They had sent me some water blasters in the spring, and they sent me these dart blasters. Everything else that you see here is either bought by myself at great expense or 
graciously sent to me by people who enjoy my content. Namely, people like Ryan Inglestad, or Danny Pack, or uh, a number of others. And if I try to name them all, I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss some, and then I would be highly, highly disappointed in myself. I mean, because over here in the Busby Historical Wall, I mean, one of my key pieces. It's one of my favorites now. It's like Damien Wisnant. He sent me the Mustang Six, and it's like there's other people who have sent me things to contribute, and. I mean, I'm going to always mention Ryan Inglesad first and foremost. He has supported my channel so much. And that's a big part of how I've gotten these blasters. And my patron, that money, I have four patrons currently. And David Bullock was one who had been a patron up till here just this last month. And I thank each of them. That's David Bullock. That's Homely665, which he's everywhere. So you guys know him. That's Tisha Key. That's one more prime and hamster. All five of them support my channel on Patreon. And Tisha Keys also sent me a couple of X Shot blasters off of my Amazon wish list, which that's going to be up in the next video. Her, her blaster. But outside of that, Busby does not provide me with my bulk of blasters. I've gotten a couple of water blasters and I've gotten a, a set of the new Adventure Force releases this year. So I'm probably going to lose out on that if they decide to kick me to the curb. I'll still be doing the blasters and the reviews and everything that you've come to be used to. And I'm still going to do my Busby Classic Series. And I'm still going to review Busby Blasters. I mean, they didn't send me the Revolution. They never have, actually. Out of all the blasters, they've never sent me a Revolution. But I love that thing. That's my favorite current one. But I'm going to leave it on that. To wrap it up, Bosby has made a huge mistake, but it might be some light at the end of the tunnel. Even White has went and found one with the proper catch mechanism at his local Walmart. And I've seen somebody else, which I can't recall. I just glanced at it and seen somebody else had found the proper catch mechanism locally. So maybe Bosby has caught all the bad ones, or maybe they've already been purged, but they're at Walmarts now. And maybe now they're focusing on producing the good one. I'll have to wait to hear from the Vice President. She hasn't gotten back to me here in, well, well over a week. But whenever she gets back to me, I will happily share that information with the users on my Discord and on my Patreon. And I possibly will do a video to wrap this whole convoluted mess surrounding the Thundershot up. But this is Mongoose Jake saying thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. With my genuine thoughts, this is not this has not been a uh, rehearsed video, so it's going to be long. But this is me with a lot of thoughts I wanted to put together on Busby's mistakes here with the Thundershot, the issues that they are facing right now, but that they should not be absolutely destroyed in the public for a mistake. That's not that's just not fair to hold them ultra accountable. While other companies haven't had that same experience. And I say that as the person who has, well, I'm in the middle of this. Everybody else isn't. I am in the middle of this. It was my review that sparked this. And it was my follow-up video that added the extra fuel to the fire. So, coming from the first-hand account. Nobody else has this first-hand account like I do. But I'm right in the middle of it. So... Just take a second to step back. Let's not destroy a company over a mistake. Let's wait and see how they handle it. Because like I said earlier in the video, if you destroy every company over one mistake, how many companies would we have left? It wouldn't be very many. Because we're not perfect. And we are not as humans perfect. We all make mistakes. A company that I happen to be a fan of made a mistake. A big one. Admittedly. But keep that in mind. How many mistakes have you made today or in the past week? And then use that thought process to handle this situation. Because unlike what everybody else is saying, Busby still makes good blasters. And they still have all the way up until now. And they still are right now. Revolution. 
Clash Combat's still available. Equalizer just came out. Trigger Fire's good. Just came out. Rebel Mech is still on the shelves there. So is the Battle Blazer. So is the Buzzbee Exterminator. So is the Equalizer. So are their Walking Dead series blasters. I've got the whole collection over to my left side. They're still on the shelves at Dollar General's. And pretty much all of those except for um, Andrew's Rifle. Other than Andrew's Rifle, they're all good. So to say that they don't make good blasters would be false. They do make good blasters. Oh, and the crossbow from the Walking Dead series is also in the Adventure Force line, and it's that thing is fun, and it's very moddable, because it just uses reworked champion internals. So, don't fall into the hype. Busby still has good products, but now that they've kind of went the way of the Nerf Warden, it the Thundershot with the bad catch is a flop. Thundershot with a good catch, if they fix this and get rid of all the bad ones and only sell the Thundershot with a good catch, still got some funky ergonomics, but it'd be a solid choice too. And I'm going to leave it on that. The Smoggy Shake saying, hope you watched and enjoyed this, and I know it's long, but I thank you if you stayed to the end. And I, I sincerely hope that you'll hang around for the next video. Thanks for watching.